Remote Mind Control Technology by Anna Keeler There had been an ongoing controversy over health effects of electromagnetic fields, EMF, for years, e.g., extremely low frequency radiation in the Navy's Project Seafarer, emissions of high power lines and video display terminals, radar and other military and industrial sources of radio frequencies and microwaves, such as plastic sealers and molders. Less is known of Department of Defense, DOD, and Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, interest in anti-personnel applications of the invisible energies. The ability of certain parameters of EMF, to cause health effects, including neurological and behavioral disturbances, has been part of the military and CIA arsenal for years. Capabilities of the energies to cause predictable and exploitable effects or damages can be gleaned from discussion of health effects from environmental exposures. Interestingly, some scientists funded by the DOT or CIA to research and develop invisible electromagnetic weapons have voiced strong concern, perhaps even superior knowledge or compensatory to guilt, over potentially serious consequences of environmental exposures. Eldon Bird who worked for Naval Surface Weapons, Office of Non-Lethal Weapons, was commissioned in 1981 to develop electromagnetic devices for purposes including riot control, clandestine operations and hostage removal. In the context of a controversy over reproductive hazards to video display terminal, VDT, operators, he wrote of alterations in brain function of animals exposed to low-intensity fields. Offspring of exposed animals exhibited a drastic degradation of intelligence later in life, couldn't learn easy tasks, indicating a very definite and irreversible damage to the central nervous system of the fetus. With VDT operators exposed to weak fields, there have been clusters of miscarriages and birth defects, with evidence of central nervous system damage to the fetus. Bird also wrote of experiments where behavior of animals was controlled by exposure to weak electromagnetic fields. At a certain frequency and power intensity, they could make the animal purr, lay down and roll over. Jose Delgado, advocate of a psycho-civilized society through mind control, no longer implants electrodes in the brains of mental patients and prisoners, he now induces profound behavioral changes, hyperactivity, passivity, etc., by exposing animals to precisely tuned EMFs. He has also written of genetic damage produced by weak EMF fields, similar to, those emitted by VDTs. Invariably, brain tissue damage and skeletal deformation was observed in newborn chicks that had been exposed. He was concerned enough to check emissions from the appliances in his kitchen. Ross 80 induces calcium efflux in brain tissue with low power level fields, a basis for the CIA and military's confusion weaponry, and has done behavioral experiments with radar modulated at electroencephalogram, EEG, rhythms. He is understandably concerned about environmental exposures within 1 to 30 Hz, cycles per second, either as a low frequency or an amplitude modulation on a microwave or radio frequency, as these can physiologically interact with the brain even at very low power densities. Microwaves Microwave health effects is a juncture where Department of Defense and environmental concerns collide and part ways. Security, according to Sam Kolov of Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, first prompt of low intensity, for non-thermal, microwaves. At times, up 70 to 80 percent of the research was funded by the military. From 1965 to 1970, a study dubbed Project Pandora was undertaken to determine the health and psychological effects of low-intensity microwaves, the so-called Moscow signal registered at the American Embassy in Moscow. Initially, there was confusion over whether the signal was an attempt to activate bugging devices or for some other purpose. There was suspicion that the microwave irradiation was being used as a mind control system. CIA agents asked scientists involved in microwave research whether microwaves beamed at human beings from a distance could affect the brain and alter behavior. Dr. Milton Zaret who on undertook to analyze Soviet's literature on microwaves for the CIA, wrote, For non-thermal irradiation, they believe the electromagnetic fields induced by the microwave environments affects the cell membrane, and this results in an increase of excitability or an increase in the level of excitation of nerve cells. With repeated or continued exposure, the increased excitability leads to a state of exhaustion of the cells of the cerebral cortex. Employees first learned of the irradiation ten years after Project Pandora began. Before that, information had been parceled out on a strict need-to-know basis, which excluded most employees at the compound. Due to secrecy, and probably reports like Dr. Zaretz, Jack Anderson speculated that the CIA was trying to cover up a Soviet effort at behavior modification through irradiation of the, the United States diplomats, and that the cover-up was created to protect the CIA's own mind control secrets. Finally, an unusually large number of illnesses were reported among the residents of the compound. 
The United States Ambassador Walter Stossel developed a rare blood disease similar to leukemia. He was suffering headaches and bleeding from the eyes. A source at the State Department informally admitted that excessive radiation had been leaking from his telephone, an American high-frequency radio transmitter on the roof of the building had, when operating, induced high-frequency signals well above the, the United States safety standard through the phones in the political section, as well as in lines to Stossel's office. No doubt, National Security Agency or CIA electronic devices also contributed to the electromagnetic environment at the embassy, although values for these were never released, as they are secret. Stossel was reported as telling his staff that the microwaves could cause leukemia, skin cancer, cataracts, and various forms of emotional illness. White blood cell counts were estimated to be as high as 40% above normal in one-third of the staff, and serious chromosome damage was uncovered. The Soviets began research on biological effects of microwaves in 1953. A special laboratory was set up at the Institute of Hygiene and Occupational Diseases, Academy of Medical Sciences. Other labs were set up in the USSR and in Eastern Europe that study both effects of microwaves and low-frequency electromagnetic radiation. Years ago, in the halls of science, complaints could be heard that Soviet experiments regarding bio-effects couldn't be duplicated due to insufficient details in their scientific literature, although, according to one DOT official, 75% of the United States papers on the subject carried insufficient parameters for duplication. Scientists even questioned with McCarthy-like sentiments whether the Soviets were attenuating to frighten or misinform with false scientific reporting of bio-effects. It was unthinkable, according to cruder scientific theory, that non-thermal levels of microwaves could cause harm. Impetus for a study of such effect came not from concern for the public, but rather in the military and intelligence community's suspicion of the Soviets, and their equally strong interest in developing exploitable anti-personnel effects and interest that continues unabated today. The CIA and DOD security concerns metamorphized into research and development of invisible weapons capable of impacting on health and psychological processes. In fact, due to the finding of startling effects, DARPA's security became even tighter, and a new code name Bizarre was assigned to the project. Scientist Alan Frey of Random Line, Inc. was always more interested in low-intensity microwave hazards, thermal effects were known. During Project Pandora, the Navy funded such projects of his, as how to use low average power intensities, to, induce heart seizures, create leaks in the blood-brain barrier, which would allow neurotoxins in the blood to cross and cause neurological damage or behavioral disorders, and how produce auditory hallucination or microwave hearing, during which the person can hear tones that seem to be coming from within the head or from directly behind it. In 1976, the Defense Intelligence Agency, DIA, released a report in which they attributed the results of Dr. Frey's who acknowledges that his work was misattributed, he had thought up the projects himself. The DILA, but not the CIA, is allowed to use mirror imaging and net assessment in their reports, that is, respectively, the attribution of one's own motives and weapons capabilities to the other side, in this case, the Soviets. It follows, that there is nothing to prevent them from releasing a report prepared in this manner, and thus muddy the water of decision-making, pervert public opinion stoke up congressional funding or enlist the support of naive scientists to counter the threat. There was strong criticism, through the American press, but apparently the DIA, at least in some issues, can dish it up with impunity. The 1976 DIA report also credits the Soviets with other capabilities, stating, sounds and possibly even words which appear to be originating internally can be induced by signal modulation at very low power densities. Dr. Sharp, a Pandora research at Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, some of whose work was so secret that he couldn't tell his boss, conducted an experiment in which the human brain has received a message carried to it by microwave transmission. Sharp was able to recognize spoken words that were modulated on a microwave carrier frequency by an audiogram, an analog of the word sound vibrations, and carried into his head in a chamber where he sat. Dr. James Lynn of Wayne State University has written a book entitled Microwave Auditory Effects and Applications. It explores the possible mechanisms for the phenomenon, and discusses possibilities for the deaf, as persons with certain types of hearing loss can still hear pulsed microwaves, as tones or clicks and buzzes, if words aren't modulated on. Lynn mentions the sharp experiment and comments, the capability of communicating directly with humans by pulsed microwaves is obviously not limited to the field of therapeutic medicine. Dr. Robert O. Becker, twice nominated for the Nobel Prize for his health work in bioelectromagnetism, was more explicit in his concern over illicit government activity. He wrote of obvious application in covert operations designed to drive a target crazy with voices. What is frightening is that words, 
transmitted via low-density microwaves or radio frequencies, or by other covered methods, might be used to create influence. For instance, according to a 1984 The United States House of Representatives report, a large number of stores throughout the country use high-frequency transmitted words, above the range of human hearing, to discourage shoplifting. Stealing is reported to be reduced by as much as 80% in some cases. Dr. Frey also did experiments on reduction of aggression. Rats who were accustomed to fighting viciously when their tails were pinched, accepted the pinching with relative passivity when irradiated with pulsed microwaves in the ultra-high frequency range, UHF, at a power density of less than 1000 microwatts slash CM2. He has also done low-intensity microwave experiment degrading motor coordination and balance. When asked about weapons application of his work, he answered by referring to himself as just a biological theory, and his work for the Navy, basic medical research. Lies before Congress in 1976, George H. Heilmeyer, Director of Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, responded to a mailgram to President Ford from Don Johnson of Oakland, paraphrasing Johnson's concern, and assuring him that the DARPA-sponsored Army-slash-Navy Pandora experiments were never directed at the use of microwaves as a surveillance tool, nor in a weapons concept. Don Johnson lingered in the memory of one DOT official who sponsored microwave research in the 1970s. Johnson was enigmatically described as brilliant schizophrenic was done. Scientists who have disagreed with the DOT on health effects of microwaves and on the, the United States exposure standard, have received scant more respect and have had their cut. The next year, Heilmeyer elaborated in a written response to an inquiry before Congress, this agency DARPA is not aware of any research projects, classified or unclassified, conducted under the auspices of the Defense Department, now ongoing, or in the past, which would have probed possibilities of utilizing microwave radiation in a form of what is popular known as mind control. We do not foresee the development by DARPA of weapons using microwaves and actively being directed toward altering nervous system function or behavior. Neither are we aware of any of our own forces, developing such weapons. Finally memoranda were released that rendered the goals of Pandora transparent. Richard Cesaro, initiator of Pandora and director of DARPA's Advanced Sensor Program, justified the project in that little or no work has been done in investigation of the subtle behavioral changes which may be evolved by a low-level electromagnetic field. Researchers had long ago established that direct stimulus of the brain could alter behavior. The question raised by radio frequencies microwaves or radio frequencies of the UHF or VHF band was whether the electromagnetic could have a similar effect at very low levels. Pandora's initial goal to discover whether a carefully constructed microwave signal could control the mind. In the context of long-term low-level effects, Cesaro felt that central nervous system effects could be important, and urged their study for potential weapons applications. After testing a low-level modulated microwave signal on a chimpanzee and within approximately a week causing stark performance decrements and behavioral disorganization, Cesaro wrote the potential of exerting a degree of control on human behavior by low-level microwaves seems to exist. On the basis of the primate study extensive discussions took place and plans were made to extend the studies to humans. According to a former Dodd security analyst one such microwave experiment with human subjects took place at Lorden Prison in the early 1970s. He said that such research, in a weapons context, has occurred on behavioral effects of microwaves since 1976. He also asked why are you so concerned about then? What about now? They can call anyone a terrorist. Who are they using it on now? Behavioral effects in June 1970 A government think tank, Rand Corporation published a report by R.J. McGregor, entitled A Brief Survey of Literature Relating to Influence of Low-Intensity Microwaves on Nervous Functions. After noting that the, the United States Microwave Guideline in effect in 1970 for the public, 10,000 microwatts slash CM2, now the Industrial and Military Guideline, is proscribed from consideration of the rate that thermal effects are dissipated, the author, a specialist in modeling neural networks states that scientific studies have consistently shown that humans exhibit behavioral disturbances when subjected to non-thermal levels of microwaves well below this level. The symptoms that McGregor lists for those humans exposed more or less regularly at work or in the living environment are insomnia, irritability, loss of memory, fatigue, headache, tremor, hallucination, autonomic disorders, and disturbed sensory functioning. He reports that swelling and distension of nerve cells have been produced at intensities as low as 1000 microwatts slash CM2, the current the United States guideline for the public. In a companion RAND paper June 1970 entitled A Direct Mechanism for the Direct Influence of Microwave Radiation on Neuroelectric Function, 
McGregor sets forth the idea that the electrical component of microwave radiation induces transmembrane potentials in nerve cells and thereby disturbs nervous function and behavior. Microwaves penetrate and are absorbed more deeply so that they can produce a direct effect on the central nervous system. With smaller wavelengths the principal absorption occurs near the body surface and causes peripheral or lower nervous system effects. Dr. Milton Zarad who analyzed neurological effects for the CIA during Project Pandora, he is now one of the few doctors willing to take the government on by testifying on behalf of plaintiffs filing claims for microwave health damage, wrote that receptors of the brain are susceptible and react to extremely low intensities of microwave radiation if this is delivered in accordance with appropriate coding. Coding is reported to be influenced by the character of the signal so as to be a function, for example, of the shape and amplitude of the pulse or waveform. Dr. Ross Aidy, formerly of the Brain Research Center at University of Southern California, Los Angeles, now at Loma Linda University Medical School, Loma Linda, California was among the first of the Pandora researchers. His work is more precise in inducing specific behavior rather than merely causing disorganization or decrements in performance, that is, apart from his studies on inducing calcium efflux in brain tissue which causes interference with the function of the brain and is one basis of confusion weaponry. More specifically, Aidy's thesis is that if the electroencephalogram, e.g., has informational significance, one can induce behavioral changes if one imposes environmental fields that look like EEG. During Aidy's career he has correlated a wide variety of behavioral states with EEG including emotional states, e.g. stress in hostile questioning, increments of decision making and conditioning correct versus incorrect performance etc. and he has imposed electromagnetic fields that look like EEG which has resulted in altered EEG and behavior. In published accounts of Aidy's work, he has shown that it is possible to apply low biologic frequencies by using a radio frequency carrier modulated at specific brain frequencies. He demonstrated that if the biological modulation on the carrier frequency is close to frequencies in the natural EEG of the subject it will reinforce or increase the number of manifestation of the imposed rhythms and modulate behavior. The conditioning paradigm, animals were trained through aversion to produce specific brain wave rhythms, animals trained in a field with the same rhythm amplitude modulated on it differed significantly from control animals in bo both accuracy and resistance to extinction, at least 50 days versus 10 in the controls. Then the fields were used on untrained animals occurrence of the applied rhythm increased in the animal's EEG. Dr. Eddy is an accomplished scientist which lead one to believe the significance of this experiment goes beyond mere reinforcement of the animal's brain waves. Did the rhythms that he chose to apply have special significance with relation to information processing or conditioning? The 4.5 theta rhythm that he applied was the natural reoccurring frequency that he had measured in the hippocampus during a phase of avoidance learning. The hippocampus as Aidy wrote in an earlier paper, involves neural processes connected with consolidation of memory traces. It relates closely to the need for focusing attention and the degree to which recapitulation of past experience is imposed. One might add to ensure survival. Does it follow that an EEC modulated carrier frequency can he use to enhance human avoidance learning? You bet provided the same careful procedures are followed with humans as were with animals, the same result would accrue. Recall again the goals of Pandora to discover whether a carefully constructed electromagnetic signal could direct the mind. The obvious question becomes how many and with how much accuracy can behavioral states or frames of mind be intentionally imposed, that is, apart from the certain technological capability to promote disorganization and degradation of perception and performance through use of the fields. In fact many components of warning or conditioning including affect, i.e. feeling or emotional states, can be imposed through use of the fields from a distance e.g. behavioral arousal orienting reflex, subliminal stress, alarm reaction without realization of the contextual significance, so-called levels of consciousness, inhibition of cerebral function which would render one more susceptible to suggestion or influence and so on. All components necessary to produce behavioral conditioning, including ways to provide contextual significance can be applied from a distance, i.e. without direct brain contact as was necessary in older behavior modification experiments. Another indication that the government entertained notions of behavior control through use of fields and sound is a 1974 research proposal by J. F. Shapitz. To test his theory his plan was to record EEG correlates induced by various drugs and then to modulate these biological frequency on a microwave carrier. Could the same behavioral states be produced by imposing these brainwave frequencies on human subjects? His plan went further and included inducing hypnotic states and using words modulated on a microwave carrier frequency to attempt to covertly condition subjects to perform various acts. The plan is released, through the Freedom of Information Act, seems less part of a careful recipe for influence than 80s and other Dodd scientists' work, 
and may have been released to mislead by lending an information beam science fiction-like quality to the work. The end of Project Pandorum may have signified the end of research into the cause of effects of the varying frequencies registered at the American Embassy in Moscow, some known to be due to CIA and National Security Agency equipment but interest in microwave and biological frequency weapons did not wane. Indeed there are indications of applications. As we have seen research that began in response to a security concern, transformed almost overnight into a search for weapons applications, while cloaked in disinformation about the Soviets. What types of weapons? There are three possibilities. 1. That microwaves, perhaps modulated with low biological frequencies are used from a distance to cause performance decrements and disorganization by interfering with neuroelectric function, or by causing central nervous system effects subjective feelings of ill health or health syndrome associated with periodic exposures at intensities below 10,000 microwatts slash cm2. 2. That microwaves are used to create organ-specific effects, e.g., tissues with less blood circulation like the gallbladder lens of the eye, etc., can compensate less to increased heating, heart dysfunctions can be caused, lesions or necrosis of internal tissues can be induced without a subject necessarily feeling heat and symptoms might manifest later at certain frequencies. Slight heating or hot spots can be created at the center of the head, there is an ongoing navy contract to find parameters to disrupt human metabolic functions, or 3 that they are used in an interdisciplinary approach to remote conditioning by creating information processing effects, as Dr. Aidy's work shows, or to induce feeling or emotional elements of cognition such as excitatory reactions, subliminal stress, behavioral arousal, enhanced suggestibility by inhibition of higher functions, or various other EEG or behavioral effects. There are strong indications that microwaves have been used to cause the decrements. There is no question but that the United States military and the CIA know the behavioral or psychoactive significance of applied biological rhythms and other frequencies, as this was part of the thrust of their work during Pandora. Inducing emotion or feelings through use of electromagnetic fields, and then synchronizing the feelings with words, symbolic of ideas, would be an effective way to induce preferences or attitude change, because it would mirror natural thought processes. The question seems less whether conditioning through use of covered technology is possible, than whether there has been a policy choice to use it. If the results of their research are used as part of a system that can condition behavioral responses from a distance, it is a secret that they hold close like a baby. Richard Helms wrote of such a system in the mid-1960s while he was CIA plans director. He spoke of sophisticated approaches to the coding of information for transmittal to population targets in the battle for the minds of and of an approach integrating biological, social, and physical mathematical research in attempts to control behavior. He found particularly notable, use of modern information theory, automata theory, and feedback concepts, for a technology for controlling behavior, using information inputs as causative agents. Due to Project Pandora, it is now known that applied biological, and other, frequencies can also be used as direct information inputs, e.g., of feeling, or emotion, and to reinforce brain rhythms associated with conditioning and information processing. One way to get such a signal into a human may be through use of a high-frequency carrier frequency. Results of research into information processing, unconscious processes, decision-making, memory processes, and evoked brain potentials would likely be exploited or integrated in an interdisciplinary system. Covered technological influence is not so foreign to the American way of life as one may think. It was reported in a 1984 the United States House of Representatives hearing that high-frequency audio transmissions are applied, for instance, in some department stores to prevent theft, one East Coast department store chain was reported to have saved $600,000 over a nine-month period, and in some grocery stores with the result that employee-induced cash shortages significantly decreased and employees are better mannered. In other words, as Helms wrote of, verbal messages are delivered at frequencies above human hearing. Technology for commercial applications is relatively sophisticated, one studio uses a layered approach and 31 channels in preparing tapes, some employ a dual coding approach, integrating scientific knowledge of information processing modes of the two brain hemispheres, and others use techniques where a consumer is spoken to as a three-year-old child. There is no the United States law specifically regulating these types of transmission, over radio and TV a Federal Communication Commission catch-all provision might apply. If industry uses undetectable audio transmissions to meet security concerns, it seems that the military and CIA would exploit the same technology and would have developed much more sophisticated technology for applications. The public's conception of subliminal programming is naive compared to capabilities. 
The military has studied and considered for usefulness in a warfare and psychological warfare context a wide range of biological or pharmacological substances. In the memo referred to above, Helms wrote that the, the United States is five years ahead of the Soviets in pharmacological agents producing behavioral effects. Some of these substances would increase susceptibility to influence if incorporated in the multidisciplinary approach he wrote of. A side effect of lowered resistance to subthreshold stimulus might be that, some would become aware of illicit influence, even under normal circumstances there is a wide variation in sensitivity among individuals to subthreshold stimulus, normal individuals whom psychology terms reducers are much more sensitive in this way, actually, most schizophrenics are extreme reducers, and therefore, much more aware of stimulus that others aren't cognizant of. Convenient to the agencies involved in covered influence, is that among primary symptoms of schizophrenia or mental illness are ideas that one is being influenced by transmission, e.g. radio frequencies, voices, or even telepathy, unless complaints about covered psychological weapons are well organized, they would lend to be discounted as indicative of mental imbalance. There are many ways to create temporary or permanent states that increase receptivity to suggestion and slash or conditioning. It is interesting to note that scientific studies have correlated exposure to electromagnetic fields alone with mental hospital admissions and worsening of symptoms of mental patients, even as an etiological factor in the onset of mental illness. A marker disease for exposure to microwaves is damage behind the lens of the eyes. A disproportionate number of persons so damaged also suffer from mental disease or neurological impairment. Specific targets weapons against whom? Safe to say. In order to enlist the aid of scientists, the military, and CIA would act true to form, that is, to motivate and overcome reluctance due to dictates of conscience, they would evoke a serious security risk during initial phases of development. In fact, on the unclassified face of it, a number of reports have openly suggested use of microwave against terrorists. Los Alamos National Laboratory, now under supervision of University of California, prepared a report for Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA setting forth that use of microwave radiation on terrorists could kill them, stun them, or at least modify their behavior by changing their perceptions. At this point the cloak is donned, and the report continues, there are reports of Eurasian communist countries performing research with combined fields of signals from several different microwave frequencies to produce at least perceptual distortions in humans. Cable News Network recently aired a report on electromagnetic weapons and showed an official document that was a contingency plan to use electromagnetic weapons against terrorists. It wasn't made clear who the terrorists were or what the contingency was. Prior to the news show however, reports had surfaced, the source a dot medical engineer, that in the content of conditioning, microwaves, and other modalities had regularly been used against Palestinians. Greenham Common when Dodd develops a weapon it can be said with certainty that it will be tested and, if possible, where it would be useful to meet their goals. Women peace activists have kept an ongoing vigil at the periphery of the, the United States Air Force Base at Greenham in England since 1981. They are protesting build-up of nuclear weapons. The, the United States cruise missiles, which are nuclear warheads small enough to be mounted on the back of a truck called a launcher vehicle, arrived at the base in March, 1984. Since then the women in the encampment and number of the cruise watch network have ensured that when the launcher vehicle and its convoy taken out into the British countryside, the dispersal exercises aren't as secret as the military intended them to be. The women of the network, nonviolent activists, have been subjected to intense harassment in an effort to be rid of their presence. In the fall of 1984, things changed dramatically, many, if not most of the women began suffering illness, and, simultaneously, the massive police and military presence at the base virtually disappeared, and new and different antenna were installed at the base. In a report prepared by Rosalie Bertel, Commissioner for International Commission of Health Professionals for Human Rights, a non-governmental organization based in Geneva, Switzerland, the unusual patterns of illness ranged from severe headaches, drowsiness, menstrual bleeding at abnormal times of postmenopausal, to of temporary paralysis, faulty speech coordination and in one case apparent circulatory failure requiring hospitalization. Other symptoms documented by peace activist Kim Bealey, who coordinates investigations into reports of illness at specific places around the base, included, vertigo, retinal bleeding, burnt face, even at night, nausea, sleep disturbances, and palpitations. Psychological symptoms included lack of concentration, disorientation, loss of memory, irritability, and a sense of panic in non-panic situations. The symptoms have virtually all been associated in medical literature with exposure to microwaves and most listed can be induced through low intensity or non-thermal exposures. Measurement were taken around the base by members of Electronics for Peace and by others. Strong signals, 
up to 100 times the normal background level were detected on a number of occasions. In fact, signals 10 times stronger than those felt to be emanating from normal base transmitting systems were found. The strongest signals generally appeared in areas where the women said that they suffered ill effects. For instances, they were found to cover the women's encampment near the green gate, gate to the base are designated by color, but stopped abruptly at the edge of the road leading to the gate. The strength of the signals were also found to reflect the activity of the women, e.g., they increased rapidly when the women started a demonstration. Visitors to the encampment, both men and women, reported experiencing same types of symptoms and the same pattern of variation as the Greenham women. In a review prepared by National Bureau of Standards, Law Enforcement Standard Laboratory, for Nuclear Defense Agency, Intelligence and Security Directorate, use of low-intensity microwaves was considered for application as a psychological deterrent. The report stated, microwave radiation has frequently been cited as being responsible for non-thermal effects in integrated central nervous system activity. The behavioral consequences most frequently reported have been disability, listlessness, and increased irritability. The report fails to mention just as frequently cited low-intensity microwave health effects as chromosome damage, congenital birth defects, autonomic nervous system function, brain damage and other neurological abnormalities, including leaks in the blood-brain barrier and depletion of some neurotransmitter, among a host of other health impairments. As activist Kim Bealey put it, it would now appear that we are protecting the missiles by killing people slowly. It is not necessary that the transmission take place from equipment in the vicinity of a target, although the Greenham women seem to be suffering from transmission made from within the base. Propagation of microwaves has been very well studied and is very sophisticated, e.g., a 2-inch beam can be sent from a satellite point to point, to a receiving disk on Earth, and, it was reported in 1978, that the CIA had a program called Operation Peak, which included bouncing radio signals or microwaves off the ionosphere to affect the mental function of people in selected areas, including Eastern European nuclear installation. In the, the United States, at this time, there is no legally enforceable microwave standard. There never has been an enforceable standard for the public or the workplace. Microwaves at intensities within the suggested guideline have finally been shown, even by the United States research, to cause health damage. Notes, permission is given to reproduce and redistribute, for non-commercial purposes only, provided this information and the copy remain intact and unedited. The views and opinions expressed below are not necessarily the views and opinions of very COMM, MindNet, or the editors unless otherwise noted. Editor, Mike Coyle Contributing Editors, Walter Bowart, Alex Constantine Assistant Editor, Rick Lawler Research, Daryl Bross.